Howdy, it's Kyle talking about Tennessee. In this video, I'll be going over various aspects of the geography of the state. I'll be talking about the cities and urban landscape. I'll be going over the physical geography to include the scenery, national parks, natural disasters, and climate. I'll be talking about economic indicators to include industries to drive the economy, companies headquartered in the state, tax rates, and agriculture. And I'll be talking about the culture of the state to include music and food. So if you're interested in learning more about the volunteer state, this is the video for you. Tennessee sits in the southeastern portion of the country. In terms of area, it's the 34th largest state in the country. At the 2020 census, the population was 6.9 million, which ranks at 16th in the U.S. That's up from 6.3 million in 2010, and most of the population growth has been in the Nashville metropolitan area. It was admitted into the Union in 1796 as the 16th state in the country and it's tied with Missouri for being the state that borders the most other states. Both Tennessee and Missouri border eight states, and they border each other. The capital and largest city is Nashville. There's a population of 689,000, which makes it the 21st largest city in the U.S. There's been quite a bit of growth in the city itself, and all of the suburban and exurban counties are growing quite a bit as well. The metropolitan area has a population of over 1.9 million, which makes it the 36th largest metro in the U.S. The heart of downtown is centered on Broadway, which is a very famous street known for having all the honky-tonk music clubs. Just about every day of the year, there's a lot of live music going on on Broadway, and a lot of it has no cover charge. It's a big party spot and is the most popular part of town for tourists to go to. There are lots of other interesting neighborhoods near downtown, many of which have been gentrified in the recent years. One is called the Gulch, which is a neighborhood directly adjacent to downtown. There are some old warehouses that have been turned into some coffee shops and restaurants and bars. And then the part of town called East Nashville has historically been kind of an eclectic mix of working class and middle class folks. This is traditionally a part of town where a lot of the musicians and artists in Nashville would live. There has been some gentrification going on in the neighborhood, but overall East Nashville still has a very eclectic feel to it. The West End neighborhood is where you find the elite Vanderbilt University and also Centennial Park, which is home to a large replica of the Greek Parthenon. North Nashville is the poorest and highest crime part of town, but you're starting to see some gentrification in that area and some of the poor folks are being priced out. Where they're going, I don't know. When people think of Nashville, they'll probably think of music first and probably country music first. And it is in fact home to the Country Music Hall of Fame. Right downtown is the Ryman Auditorium, which is the historic building where the Grand Old Opry was originally shot. But now that stuff is out in the part of town called Opryland. This is where the new Grand Ole Opry is. There's a big mall with a bunch of chain stores there, a resort and a convention center. To me, that part of town is more Disney than country, but it is a popular part of town for tourists to go to. And Nashville is extremely important in terms of the music industry. And it really is an industry. It's not just the live musicians and the live music venues, but also the session musicians, sound engineers, songwriters, agents, equipment techs, guitar and drum techs, producers, and for a lot of musicians that want to make it big in the industry, they'll often move to Nashville. Pre-pandemic, there were 74 recording studios in the city, and it's home to a lot of the expensive suits and check signers of the music industry. So like many other places in the country, Nashville is a very nice place, so a lot of people are moving there, and it's becoming really expensive to live there. The second largest city in the state is Memphis. There's a population of 633,000 people, which is down from 646,000 in 2010. It sits right along the Mississippi River, and the suburbs to the west are in Arkansas, and the suburbs to the south are in Mississippi. The overall metro area population is about 1.3 million people, and approximately 300,000 of those live in either Arkansas or Mississippi. The city itself is declining in population a little bit, but the overall metro is growing slowly. Downtown is right along the Mississippi River, and the most famous street through downtown is Beale Street. This is similar to Broadway in Nashville. The street is often closed down to pedestrians only, but it's lined with all kinds of great music venues and shops. It is popular with tourists, but it is a great spot to go if you're a local and you want to hear live blues music. Right downtown is the most famous building in Memphis, the iconic Pyramid. This used to be the arena for the University of Memphis and the Memphis Grizzlies basketball teams, but they've both since moved to a new arena, and now the Pyramid is a Bass Pro Shops. Downtown is where you also find the National Civil Rights Museum, and this is housed at the Lorraine Motel, the site where Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. I've always felt it was very strange that they kept this building up and now use it for the Civil Rights Museum, but that's where it is. 
but it is a very powerful museum that is both disturbing and uplifting at the same time. The city is home to the world-famous St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. This is a very well-respected non-profit hospital, and the care is 100% free for the children there. It can be tough being that St. Jude is often for children facing some of the worst conditions and diseases, but it is a great hospital that's doing a lot of wonderful work. And just like many other cities, the part of town called Midtown is a pretty cool spot. This is where you have the Broad Avenue Arts District, some cool local shops and art galleries. And it's also the part of town where you have the Overton Square Entertainment District. A lot of really cool restaurants and shops here and a decent foodie scene there as well. But Memphis is very notorious for having some serious urban poverty and one of the highest crime rates in the country. It's the only big city in the country that I can think of where a large part of town has a type of poverty you would normally find in the rural parts of the South. So if you've seen some of the really poor rural parts of the South, you normally only find that in rural areas, but you will also find it in the city of Memphis. But just like Nashville, Memphis is most known for its music. And it isn't just the blues on Beale Street, Memphis is also home to the Sun Records recording studios. And this is where you had a lot of rockabilly legends record their first songs, including this guy. And although Elvis was born in Mississippi, he spent his teenage and adult years in Memphis. And his world-famous mansion, Graceland, is a museum and a place you can tour. Memphis is also home to the Stax Records recording studio. Coming out of Detroit in the 60s was Motown music, a little more by-the-numbers type soul. But down in Memphis, the soul was getting funky. A lot more grunting, a lot more horns, and just a little more of a real type feel to the soul. But there are going to be some big changes to Memphis in the next 5 to 10 years. Ford Motor Company is building something called Blue Oval City, which is going to be this multi-square mile type facility about a half an hour east of Memphis. It's almost literally going to be an actual city. It's going to bring in thousands of jobs and will be one of Ford's largest electric vehicle facilities. The third largest city in the state is Knoxville. There are 190,000 people in the city and over 1 million people in the metro area. It's seen some moderate growth, especially in the more exurban counties outside the city. The most notable building is called the Sun Sphere. This was created for the 1982 World's Fair or World Expo. The building is 26 stories tall and you can go to the top and take in some pretty cool views. The main street through downtown is Gay Street. This is your primary nightlife and entertainment street. Has some nice old architecture and a nice old theater too. Another popular is the Knoxville Urban Wilderness, which is over 1,000 acres with about 50 miles of hiking and biking trails. This is really close to downtown, and as the name implies, it really is an urban wilderness. I would also like to point out that the mayor of Knox County, not the city of Knoxville, but the surrounding county, is the former fake wrestler, Kane. Knoxville is also the gateway to Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And between Knoxville and the park is the town of Gatlinburg. And this town is very touristy, dare I say very tacky, right before the entrance of the national park. Also in the region is a nearby town of Pigeon Forge, which is home to Dollywood. And this is a really popular park, a lot of great music shows and roller coasters. And all of that makes the Knoxville, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Great Smoky Mountains metro area one of the most highly visited areas in the southeast. The fourth largest city in the state is Chattanooga. There are 181,000 people in the city and there's some modest growth. It sits right along the border with Georgia. Some of the southern suburbs are in Georgia. There's over 800,000 people in the overall Chattanooga metro area and about 300,000 of those are in Georgia. The downtown's pretty nice, and the Tennessee River runs right through the heart of downtown. There's a cool pedestrian bridge that connects the south shore of the river to the north shore, and the north shore is where you have a lot of the cool and funky local shops and restaurants. The south side of the river is the main central business district where you have the high-rises, and that really cool, strange-looking building is the Tennessee Aquarium. And this is arguably the best aquarium in the country. It's a wonderful place to visit, wonderful exhibit, so definitely check it out if you're in Chattanooga. The south end of downtown is where you've seen the most gentrification. We moved here in 2007 and the south side part of town was one of the most dangerous parts of the city at the time. Fast forward to today and the south side is one of the very few parts of town where I would feel comfortable walking around by myself after midnight. It's a relatively poor city, wages are fairly low and the crime rate's rather high. But the main draw to Chattanooga for many people, including us, is the wealth of outdoor activities nearby. There are lots of little small pockets of wilderness in the city. I can roll out of bed and in 20 minutes be at the trailhead of one of many different hiking spots around the city. And the city is well known for its mountain biking and rock climbing scene and I actually know someone that moved here just for the rock climbing. But one of the things that Chattanooga is most known for is having just about the fastest internet in the world. 
And the reason for that is that we have complete net neutrality here and the internet is a local public utility. And kind of like how Memphis is going to change a lot when the new Ford Blue Oval City opens up, Chattanooga changed a lot when Volkswagen opened up its plant here. After that, there was an influx of several thousand jobs in the city, but there really hasn't been anything big since then, and population growth has definitely slowed down. The next largest metro area in the state is called the Tri-Cities, and this refers to the three cities, Johnson City, Kingsport, and Bristol. This sits in the far northeast corner of the state. The metro area has a population of about 519,000, and about 100,000 of those are across the border in Virginia. The largest of the Tri-Cities is Johnson City with about 71,000 people, Kingsport has about 55,000, and Bristol has about 27,000. Bristol, Tennessee slash Bristol, Virginia is a city that straddles the state line, and you can see the state line right there in town. Bristol takes a nickname, the birthplace of country music. It's the first place where country music was actually recorded in a studio. Even though the metro area has over half a million people, it doesn't really feel that big. And this is because the Tri-Cities themselves are a decent distance apart from each other, not one big cluster. This is a very pretty and green area, a lot of gorgeous mountains, great hiking and outdoor activities. And that's played a big role why some folks have wanted to move there recently. It hasn't been growing a ton, but there has been some modest growth and a lot of retirees from up north are moving there. This is the cheapest part of Tennessee in which to live if you want to live in a city, but hurry up, it's getting more expensive each day. The fifth largest city in the state is Clarksville with about 166,000 people. It's smaller than Chattanooga but growing faster and will probably pass Chattanooga by the 2030 census. However, the metro area population is nowhere near as big. There are 308,000 people in the Clarksville metro and about 73,000 of those are across the border in Kentucky. Clarksville is adjacent to Fort Campbell, a major army facility. It's officially in Kentucky. A lot of the people that work on the base live in Clarksville. And there's been some crazy population growth in the past 10 years. It's about an hour northwest of Nashville. A lot of folks from Nashville are moving there. That's a long commute, but Clarksville is nowhere near as expensive as Nashville. So if the pace of growth continues for the next 15 to 20 years, there isn't going to be much space between Clarksville and the northwestern suburbs of Nashville. Next, I want to discuss some of the physical geography of Tennessee. It's a much prettier state than you might be expecting. It gets a lot of rain all throughout, especially in the eastern third of the state. So it's just green throughout the entire state. But what defines the physical geography of Tennessee more than anything else is its elongated shape. The physical geography of the western portion of the state is much different than the eastern portion. So let's talk about the physical landscape of Tennessee. I think Tennessee has one of the nicest flags in the country, and the stars on the flag represent the three regions of the state known as the Grand Divisions. And these divisions are easily seen on this physiographic map of the state. The western third of the state is dominated by the Mississippi River and the Gulf Coast Plain. This area is fairly flat, often swampy, and floods a lot too. Memphis is just about the only town and the only one that's more than a couple thousand people that sits along the river. But the Mississippi River meanders quite a bit and oftentimes it will meander so much it leaves behind an oxbow lake and creates a new passage. And as a result, there are a handful of parts of Tennessee that are actually west of the Mississippi River. The middle of the three Grand Divisions has a lot of rolling hills, Cumberland Plateau, and karst topography. And this is the part of the state where Nashville is. And this is also the part of the state where you start to see an abundance of limestone, which leads to the karst topography. And the Grand Division that is the eastern third of the state is where you have Appalachian Mountains and some more karst topography. So now I want to talk about that karst. You get a lot of karst in areas where you have a lot of soluble minerals. In this part of the country, it's limestone and a lot of water. Limestone is made up of calcium carbonate, and what happens is water touches this, and it forms a weak carbonic acid. And over a long period of time, you get random erosions, cracks here, holes here, and you can end up with a sinkhole or even caves. And because there's so much limestone, so much karst in Tennessee, this is where you have the most caves of any state in the country. There are over 10,000 known caves in Tennessee. So take a look at these two maps and you can see on the physiographic map where the caves are. East Tennessee is probably the caving capital of the world, so if you're into caving, this is the place to be. The highest point in the state is called Klingman's Dome. It stands at 6,643 feet. And Tennessee ranks 17th amongst the states in terms of the highest high point. The Tennessee-North Carolina state line goes right through the high peaks of the Appalachians, right through Klingman's Dome, so Klingman's Dome is also in North Carolina. It's located within Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which is the most highly visited national park in the country, especially in October when the leaf peepers come to check out the fall foliage. 
But as I tell folks all the time, you don't have to go into the actual national park to see some of the beautiful Appalachians and fall foliage. Just outside of the park is Cherokee National Forest, which has the same beautiful scenery, same gorgeous fall foliage, but significantly smaller crowds. It's also worth noting that during the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, the whitewater competitions were actually done in Tennessee. And there are, in fact, a lot of great spots for whitewater paddling and rafting in the state. The Tennessee River is the longest river in the state, and the Tennessee Valley is the valley carved out by it. The TVA is the Tennessee Valley Authority, which is a New Deal program of FDRs back in the 1930s. And this involved the construction of many dams, created many lakes, and this significantly alleviated the flooding along the Tennessee River. In terms of climate, there isn't much variation from one end of the state to the other. The western end being more low-lying is going to be a little bit warmer, a little more humid during the summertime. And the farther east you go into the higher elevations, you are more likely to get snow in the wintertime. But perhaps the most disturbing part about the climate in Tennessee is just how much worse tornadoes have gotten in the past decade or so. So here's an article talking about a study that shows a big increase in tornadoes in the southeast. And this doesn't even include a large tornado outbreak in 2020. So as the severe weather and number of tornadoes in the Midwest goes down, it's becoming much worse in the southeast. But the Nashville disaster that has the biggest concern in the state is flooding. In 2010, Nashville had a very bad flood disaster when the Cumberland River went over its banks. Much of downtown Nashville was under several feet of water. There have also been major flooding incidents in Memphis, and just about anywhere along the Mississippi River can flood. So the TVA did reduce flood vulnerability for much of the state, but it didn't eliminate it. And Memphis is also at risk of a major earthquake from the New Madrid Fault. So if there were to be a big earthquake along the New Madrid Fault, it would do a lot of damage to Memphis, even though it really isn't that close to where it would be centered. So much geographic variation in the state due to the shape of the state. And I have a video entitled The Top 25 States for Scenic Beauty and Tennessee made a list at number 23. But it really is a very pretty state and doesn't often get the credit it deserves for its scenic beauty. Next, I want to talk about the economy of Tennessee. It is one of the poorer states in the country, but the economy has improved a lot in the past 10 years or so. A lot of new manufacturing jobs have come to the state and there are a lot more still to come. It's considered one of the cheapest states in the country in which to live, and it has some of the lowest tax rates, so you won't get the shaft from living here, but let's talk about the money of Tennessee. The GDP of the state is about $421 billion, which ranks it 18th. The household income is about $56,000, which ranks it 42nd, and the GDP per capita is about $60,000. It has a 14% poverty rate, and that's the ninth highest in the country. The largest segment of the economy in Tennessee is automotive assembly. Nissan's North American headquarters and largest U.S. assembly plant are in the suburbs of Nashville. General Motors makes Cadillac SUVs also in the Nashville suburbs at the plant where the old Saturn cars used to be built. And Chattanooga is home to Volkswagen's largest North American manufacturing plant and big research center. And like I had mentioned when talking about Memphis, Ford is planning the huge Blue Oval City development. With that, there will be four major automotive assembly plants in the state. Bridgestone of North America also has a plant in Nashville. And Bridgestone is actually a Japanese company. It sounds like it might be American, but they are headquartered in Japan. Companies that are headquartered in Tennessee include FedEx, HCA Healthcare, Community Health Systems, Unum Health Insurance, Dollar General, AutoZone, Cracker Barrel, Tractor Supply, Pilot Flying J, International Paper, Terminix, and Gibson Guitars. And the music industry isn't just drunk tourists on Broadway. There's a $5.5 billion injection of the music industry into the local economy. But it's not just the music and Nashville for tourism. The overall state ranks 11th in the country for tourism visits. Whiskey distilling is also an important part of the economy. The two largest distilleries in the state are Jack Daniels and George Dickel. Although Jack Daniels' parent company is actually headquartered in Kentucky, and George Dickel's parent company is Diageo, headquartered in the UK. Something else that's interesting is that Jack Daniels Distillery is located in a dry county. So you can distill it, but not drink it. But Tennessee whiskey certainly isn't just Jack Daniels and George Dickel. There are a lot of really good micro distilleries in the state. Another big part of the Tennessee economy is Oak Ridge National Laboratory. This is a very high level security national lab, a lot of nuclear energy research and high end computers. And Oak Ridge is home to the second most powerful supercomputer in the world. There's one in Japan more powerful, but this one's pretty strong. Giddy up, oom papa mau mau. Everything else going on at Oak Ridge is totally secret. 
The Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA, produces over 90% of the energy in the state. Most of it is either nuclear or natural gas, and TVA is phasing out its coal plants. In terms of agriculture, Tennessee is surprisingly not a very important state. It only ranks 33rd in the U.S. for overall ag. The state ranks 3rd in tobacco, 6th in tomatoes, 9th in cotton, 15th in corn, 16th in soybeans, and 16th in cattle. There really aren't that many crops grown in the state. If you're familiar with the old classic bluegrass song, Rocky Top, there's a verse that goes, corn don't grow at all on Rocky Top, dirt's too rocky by far. That's why all the folks on Rocky Top get their corn from a jar. So if you live in East Tennessee, you know that if you put a shovel in the ground, after like one inch, you're gonna hit rock. Dirt's too rocky by far. In terms of taxes, Tennessee is one of the states with the lowest tax burdens. There's zero state income tax, and the property taxes are also pretty low. However, the state gets its revenue from sales taxes. Tennessee has the highest sales tax rate in the country. But nonetheless, with zero income tax and a low property tax, the overall tax burden remains pretty low. All right, enough about the boring stuff. Let's talk about the fun stuff, starting with the music. As you may have picked up so far in the video, Tennessee is a major player in the world of music. I could do an entire hour-long video just on the music of Tennessee, but here I'm just going to focus on some of the major aspects. In the early and mid-20th century, when the South became more industrialized and urbanized, many of the musicians in the rural areas began to move to the cities. Many of the black musicians moved to Memphis, and many of the white musicians moved to Nashville. This is where you started to see the fork in popular music, with the stuff coming out of Memphis leading to rockabilly, R&B, soul, and rock and roll, and the stuff coming out of Nashville leading to country. By combining blues, gospel, and rockabilly, you get rock and roll. And even though Elvis Presley was not the first rock and roll musician, he's often credited with bringing unwatered down black music to white ears. However, in the early 1960s, Memphis was still segregated, so black musicians weren't allowed to play with white musicians in public, which was a bit of an issue because one of the most important bands in the Memphis music scene at the time was Booker T and the MGs, an interracial group. They were the backup band and session musicians for a lot of major acts in the 1960s. But because they were in the South, they couldn't even play together live until after 1964. And you can't talk about Tennessee without talking about its unofficial ambassador, Dolly Parton. If you come down here and say something negative about Dolly, be prepared for the consequences. And the last topic for the video is the food. If we're talking Tennessee food, we have to start with those Memphis ribs. The most traditional Memphis ribs are pork with a dry rub seasoning. You can get stuff with sauce on it, but the dry rub is the Memphis specialty. Memphis is also known for its tamales. There was a large number of Mexican immigrant workers on farms in the Mississippi Delta, and they brought the idea of tamales up to Memphis. If you're from Mexico or the Southwest, these are a little bit different than the tamales you're used to. These are much smaller, almost like cigar size, but it's the same general concept, meat rolled up in some cornmeal, cooked up and doused in sauce. Heading over to Nashville, the most famous food to come from there is simply called hot chicken. It's basically just regular fried chicken, but it's marinated in a really hot sauce. And after it comes out, more hot cayenne seasoning is added to it. And it's usually served on white bread with a sweet pickle. And Tennessee is also home to a couple of junk food makers. Chattanooga is where moon pies are made. I'm not really a fan of them, but they do exist. A suburb of Chattanooga is where Little Debbie Snack Cakes is headquartered. I'm not sure if these are nationwide or not, but it's very similar to either Hostess or Tasty Cake. Just a wide variety of really healthy processed desserts. But I do love me some Swiss cake rolls. With some of the best barbecue in the country and some great fried chicken, the food scene in Tennessee might not be bougie, but it's good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. Subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. geography. Most of what I talk about comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.